Hello and welcome to day four of the Jumpstart series. This is Mastin Kip and today we're going to find freedom through forgiveness. We're going to help you find freedom through forgiveness. I'm your host, Mastin Kip. That's me. You can find me over at MastinKip.com. I'm a life coach and best-selling author and retreat leader and seminar leader and just really love helping you get unstuck and living the best life possible to connect you with your purpose so that we can make 2016 incredible for you. So let's start with a quote. Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. Mark Twain. Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. I first heard this quote from Wayne Dyer quoting Twain, and I've just really contemplated this over and over and over again. And as I've led seminars and retreats all over the world, and done book tours and met a lot of people, you know, a lot of my clients have been through very powerfully traumatic things. So when you think about being the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. That's a nice concept, but when we get into what's really happening in our lives and the pain associated with the people, the circumstances, and the trauma that we got to forgive in order to get free, this concept is nice, but it becomes very difficult. It's simple, but not easy. So let's talk about the consequences of not forgiving. Now, you may have been hurt yesterday or 30 years ago. And regardless, these will be some of the consequences of not forgiving moving forward. So pay attention. And by the way, there is a natural spiritual process that takes the exact amount of time that it needs to take for you to go through your your forgiveness process. Don't try to rush it. You can't rush it. But it's easy to stay stuck. It's easy to not move forward. So I want to help really shed some light on the consequences of not forgiving, not to blame you, not to make you feel bad about yourself, but just to give you a heads up because when you see the price you're paying for not forgiving, it makes it a lot easier to step into forgiveness. So first, staying stuck in the trauma. Some of my clients have been through very traumatic things, um, sexual abuse, emotional verbal abuse, um, you know, whether it's uh, you know PTSD from being in battle. Um, or some just have were left and you know their father was 15 minutes late picking him up from school. There's no you know right or wrong amount of trauma or you know childhood issues that have come up. We all have issues from our childhood that we have to deal with. And the brain registers trauma as trauma. So the problem is is that if you stay stuck in the trauma if you don't forgive because you're holding that grudge and what you're doing is you're actually recreating the hurt over and over and over again. Also, you're allowing the person that hurt you to still have power over you. This is a big aha moment for people um, when they come to my seminars or retreats and they realize, oh my goodness, by not forgiving someone, I let them have the power. And one of the reasons why people say they don't want to forgive is because if they forgive, they'll justify what happened to them. And let me tell you something. Nothing could be further from the truth. We're not justifying what happened to you, but we do want you to be free. And the way to get free is to start to forgive. So the best way to really take your power back is to forgive the other person. We'll get to that here in a second, but just now know that if you're not forgiving, the other person has the power. Also, we're letting the wounds of your past create the same wound in the present moment. It's really interesting when I work with my clients who have um, you know been through abuse or trauma, you know, they tend to recreate the same wound over and over and over again. And Carolyn Mace talks about the idea of woundology where we let our wounds define us rather than our power. And we lead with our wounds and we bond over our wounds. And while it's important to nurture your wounds and to heal your wounds, you don't want to let your wounds become your identity because you are so much more than that. You are an infinite soul connected to an infinite creator and you are so much more than your wounding. So the problem is if you don't forgive, you let the wounds of the past create your present moment, which creates your future, and you want more than that. Also, we're not allowing yourself to grow and become more because when you don't forgive, you tend to stay stuck. You can't become more. You can't step out into that uncertainty that's vital to step out into. So it's important to understand that by if you want to become more, forgiveness is a big part of that process. Also, living in blame. Now, there's a difference between taking personal responsibility or understanding that something bad has happened to you by another human being where you have been victimized. But to stay a victim long term, you have a role in that. So a lot of my clients have been victimized by someone close to them or you know by a world event. And we don't deny that. We don't say, oh my goodness, what happened to you? 
is you know a tragedy. What happened to you is atrocious. What happened to you, I wouldn't worship on my you know greatest enemy. I don't have so much compassion for what you've been through. But if you consistently live in blame, the problem is is that the power is outside of you. So we want to start to take our power back. And I'll share with you how to do that here in a little bit. Also, not learning, and this is a big one, not learning the spiritual lesson of your trauma and believing that something is wrong with you. What's interesting and it might sound a little crazy, but just trust me here for a second and consider, be curious, could there be a spiritual lesson to the things that have caused you pain? What I've found is the answer is yes. Deeper self-love, deeper self-care, deeper self-respect, finding your creativity, finding your power, finding your decision point, finding this connection to a higher power, finding your connection to your purpose many times comes through pain of the past. And when you can learn that spiritual lesson, you can become more. And then you can start to realize nothing's wrong with you. We just got to change a few patterns. Nothing's wrong with you. We just got to change a few patterns. And if you can learn the spiritual lesson of your trauma, everything starts to change. So that thinks, uh, leads us to how to forgive. How do you forgive, Mastin? I get asked that question a lot. So let's dive into it. And this will be a simple but not easy process, all right? The first step, we need to accept what happened. You cannot change your past. So sometimes people come to me and they say, I'd like to learn how to forgive. And what they're really asking is, how can I undo the past? And I can't, you can't, we can't, the past is done, it's over. And if you've been through a hard time in your past, if you've been through something traumatic or something really intense, my heart is with you. I have much love and much compassion for what you're going through. But the first thing we got to do is we have to accept what happened. And we can spend a lifetime pushing it down, pushing it away, not accepting it. But the first thing we got to do is be real. Then we have to allow yourself to safely feel the pain fully. I can't tell you how many clients come to my retreats and seminars and all they really haven't done is felt their pain. And I know that kind of sounds very basic and simple. It's very profound. When you dive into the fear, into the resentment, into the shame, into the guilt, into the sadness, into the hurt, you can feel like you're going to die. So you have to do it safely. So you need to do this you know, with a process or with mentorship or at a live event or with a counselor, or with a therapist. But you want to dive into your pain because you can't heal it until you feel it. Also, we highly suggest writing a letter of forgiveness to the person that hurt you. So that's one letter. And then a second letter to yourself, forgiving yourself. Because ultimately, true forgiveness is being able to forgive yourself. And what people come to realize is that hurt people hurt people. So the person that hurt them was also hurting. Now, this doesn't justify the bad behavior or the trauma or whatever you've been through. But it does help us have a level of understanding that there's nothing wrong with me. And if you can write a letter of forgiveness to them and really mean it from your soul to understand that they were going through something too and then writing a letter of compassion to your uh, and forgiveness to yourself to really give yourself credit for how far you've come and to give yourself credit for getting through it and for developing these defense mechanisms that kept you alive that you now want to shed because you know yesterday's medicine has become today's poison. And then burn those letters. Let them go. It's a great practice. It's a great spiritual practice to get all that emotion out, get all that process out onto paper and then burn them. And then we want to find the spiritual lesson in the hurt and begin to improve the people's lives, other people's lives with this lesson. This is a huge aha moment for people when they realize that the pain they've been through comes bearing with them a spiritual lesson. And when you learn that lesson, you can improve the lives of other people who have been through similar things. This is a huge gigantic, great, big aha moment for many of my clients because what you've been through has given you empathy, has given you a perspective, has cultivated your intuition in such a way that it's made you seek the light. And now that you've sought the light and now that you've started to forgive, there are a lot of people who don't have the tools and the perspective that you have. And so what you can do as a huge gift to them and to yourself is to start to improve other people's lives um, who have gone through what you've been through but don't have the tools. Many co people who turn into life coaches or to do what I do, you know, they've come through an eating disorder or a relationship issue or a tr sexual trauma and they've overcome it. And then, you know, the completion of that hero's journey for them is to go back and help other people as well. And then finally, to find empathy for the person who hurt you because they too were in pain. So this is important to understand because this does not make right what happened to you. But if we can find empathy just a little bit for the other person, not to make them right, not to say I'm going to make this okay, not to justify it, 
But to understand that they're a human being who was in pain, it means that the way in which you were hurt really has nothing to do with you. It was That was the level of their capacity, of their ability to love. And some people, the way in which they show love is through sexual abuse. The way in which they show love is through physical abuse. The way in which they show love is through being a stonewall or cold shoulder, you know, and if someone's acting that way, chances are the same thing was done to them. So when we have empathy for what they've gone through, it doesn't make right what happened, but it does help you get free. So most importantly, know that the future will not be full of the pain of your past. When you heal it, you don't have to relive it. When you forgive it, you don't have to relive it. So that's something to get excited about. A lot of times we get stuck in the same old behavior of not forgiving and blaming because we don't want more of the same old thing. But the problem is we recreate it over and over and over again. So to not recreate it, we can forgive and then the future is bright. Then remember that in every moment you have a chance to turn your life around. So this may, this may be an old wound 30, 40 years ago or maybe 10 years ago or five years ago, six months ago. It's time to forgive because you have a life to live. You have a purpose to live. And any moment of your choosing, when would now be a good time to turn your life around? Because right now, and again right now, and again right now, you can turn your life around every moment you have that choice. And by not forgiving, you are allowing the person who hurt you to have power over you. Forgiveness sets you free to be and do whatever you want. So forgiveness is selfish. Take your power back and forgive today. All right, here's your next steps. First, accept what happened and feel the feeling safely. This is huge. We can spend a lifetime avoiding this. Be bold. Go straight into it. It's 2016. Don't let another year go by without forgiving. Next, write a letter to them and to yourself and then burn those babies. Burn them up. Next, seek a mentor to help you solidify your forgiveness. So whether it's coming with me on a retreat or hiring a life coach or a therapist, you really need a mentor, someone who can work with you to solidify this process. Also, learn the spiritual lesson and learn how to serve other people now that you've learned it. This one, number five, is huge because it can bring a deeper meaning to the pain that you've been through and mean that even though what we would never wish what you've been through on anybody else, if you could improve the lives of other people because of who you've become as a result of growing through the pain, then there can be a deeper meaning to this pain. And then also, after all this, leave a comment below and let me know about your new commitments. So how are you going to forgive? What's next for you? What do you need to accept? What feelings do you need to feel? What letters do you need to write? When are you going to burn them? Who could be a mentor to help you solidify this forgiveness process? And if you had an intuitive idea about what the spiritual lesson in this could be, what would it be? In the comments, let me know. If you want more training and to be informed about what I got going on with retreats and seminars and upcoming programs and promotions, head on over to mastingkip.com for more inspiration. Thank you for being a part of this Jumpstart series. It's been a pleasure to serve you. Today's topic on forgiveness is huge. Make sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube and Facebook. And if you have someone who you think could benefit from this video, please feel free to send it to them. Most importantly, and as always, my great mantra for you is get out there, take action, and make it real. We'll see you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye-bye.